praise the Lord. We need to look around and see the ones, those that are missing today that need to check up on and see what's going on. You know, we got, we got, this church needs to learn to disciple. We need to not think, just think about our own selves uh, coming, but we need to check on those that are missing. Jesus says to go out into all the world and, and make disciples out of all nations. And so we need to look and see those and we need to pray for them. And uh, because we're living in a time that we need to be very, very consistent, very, very faithful. Uh, and as even as Pablo was saying, uh, the spirit is just don't grow weary. Don't grow weary in well-doing. Really, and that's scriptural because for for due season you shall reap you shall reap praise the Lord yes you said uh, you received healing being forward because there's healing it's for everyone for healing amen yes yes there's healing it's not just for you but it's for everybody yes everybody that will receive healing whatever measure of healing you need it doesn't necessarily have to be the physical but there's the mental healing there's the emotional healing that God is God is concerned with. See, that salvation is is sozo, the whole the whole man. Jesus came to to set, now watch. He came to save our souls. That means that our soul is our mind, will, and emotion. He has to go, and we have to give him permission to deal with our with our with our bodies, areas of our lives that we have need, the things that the enemy has has taken away, has stolen. He has to give back. I believe that God desires for us, for His church, for His people, to be blessed. God wants you to progress. God wants you to be blessed. God wants you to God wants you to prosper, but never lose sight of where it came from. The Bible says that it is God that gives you power to get wealth. Okay, but He also says, know where it came from. Don't ever forget that. So the thing we need to do is that we need to have a heart of thanksgiving. This is what I'm going to talk about today. A thankful heart. I want you to turn to your Bibles to Psalms 100. Thank you, Michelle. Psalms, uh, Psalms 100. Verse uh, 4. As a matter of fact... I don't know. Let's just go ahead and look at the... I didn't tell Fred, but I'm just looking at it right now. Verse 1. Make a... Make a soft noise to the Lord, all your lands. <laughs> what are you laughing? <laughs> Make a voice of silence to God. Make a whisper before God. Make a mellow sound before the Lord. Okay. So we have to be scriptural, right? Uh, what does it say? Make a joyful shout before the Lord make a joyful shout a shout see if you were to win the lottery I'm sure you could say oh that's good I'll pick it up when I have time you know I mean you're you're you're, you're gonna come out of yourself I mean, you got millions of dollars all of a sudden and you're going to come out of yourself and you're just going to go and start uh, going to your family members and your friends and all that and, uh, and making a shout. Yeah! How much more? 
uh, before the Lord. Make a joyful shout. See, we won't shout if we're not joyful. Joy, joyful, being joyful is, is birth out of my gratitude. It's birth out of my gratitude for what God has done in my life and what God continues to do in my life. Some people shout, some people don't. But don't, those that don't shout, don't put down those that are shouting. And those that are shouting, don't put down those that are not. You know, just if, if you want to shout, just shout. In fact, give a shout to the Lord right now. You can do better than that. Come on, do another one. Father, you hear that? We're giving a shout to you. We're doing what the scripture says. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. How? Singing. We come to his presence. What does he want from us? Singing. So that's joyous. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Here's what God wants us to do. How we are to enter into his presence. We do not are supposed to enter into his presence complaining, murmuring, moaning, aching. Come as you are, yes. But come, don't come with your complaints. Because if you come with your complaints, what that does, it blocks what God wants to give to you. Because when we complain, we're focused on the wrong thing. Having a heart of gratitude will keep the condition of our heart so we can be connected to the heart of God. There is no negativity in God's heart. So if we have negativity, then that needs to go. We must not complain. All the ones that complain, the Jewish people that complained out in the wilderness after God pulled them out, saved them, and then they complain of why they why He saved them. And they were all out there. Their carcasses are all out there still. They never made it to the promised land. God has something far better for us to experience in our lives. But we must do it according to the scripture. What does it say? Enter into his gates with what? With what? Thanksgiving. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. How do you bless his name? Yeah. You tell him all what he, who he is. Put back to all what he is. He's your redeemer. He's your savior. He's your healer. He's your baptizer. He's, he's the one that sets you free. Praise the Lord. As you go down the line, he's your daddy. He's my father. Praise God. He's, he's everything that I have need of. He's my high tower. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus because of Christ, what Christ did for me. So now I can run, run unto him as my high tower because the Bible says those that are righteous run to the high tower. See, I run to him for refuge. Praise the Lord. He's my buckler. He's my protector. He sustains me. He motivates me. He encourages me. How does he do all that? By the Holy Spirit. Because the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are inseparable. Inseparable. So we have Jesus here right now because it's the Spirit of Jesus present with us. Because he says we're two or more are gathered in my name. Whose name? The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. We're gathered here together to receive an impartation of the word of the living God that we can embrace. 
God is giving a living word unto us. He's given the, word, the written word and the living word. Praise the Lord. So now, we have a whole lot of things to be thankful for. All of our complaints should be gone. Complaining should never be part of our vocabulary. Amen. Oh, I wish this would be different. Oh, I wish this person would change. Oh, I wish this person wouldn't talk that way. Oh, I wish I could get, just make more money. Oh, I, come on now. Come on. Oh, I wish I could, I could get uh, change, uh, change geographically. Oh, I wish my kids would, would act upright. Oh, I wish, uh, come on. Come on. I mean, what are you creating? The Bible calls us, that, well, actually the Bible says this, that we are a reflection of God. We are His creation. We are His offspring. So if God is a creator, then we are creators also. We create our path of the kind of path that you want. You can create it. If you don't like the path that you're walking in, change, what, change it around and start saying the right things and start worshiping God. And Anytime there was a battle, there was a battle that went on in the Old Testament. God always instructed the leaders, send the praisers, send Judah, Judah's praise. Send the praisers out there. Send the priests out there. Let them sound, the, sound the, the shout, the trumpets. And you know what? When they shouted, it was loud. When the, the trumpets were, sh were sounded, it was loud. Even the enemy... The Bible even says that the earth, there are times the earth would shake because of the shouting. Praise the Lord. Amen. And now we, we establish a Christian church. A Christian church that, you know, we have those, you know, we need to be really quiet in church. We need to, and of course, the Baptists and the Methodists and Lutherans and the Presbyterians, they're pretty good at that. They're pretty good at that. If you raise your hands, you're going to, you, you know, they're going to look at you funny. Okay, I'm not saying all of them. But you, but you got those that will, you know, shout, hey Amen, praise the Lord. They're all going to look at you. They're not used to that. Well, they need to get used to it because that's what the scripture talks about. Then they, then they have another denomination that believes that, or you know, we can sing, but we don't, you know, we're not supposed to have music. Music? Well, you get, it's amazing how we get all this interpretation. Oh, that's your interpretation. That's your interpretation. What's the interpretation of the Holy Spirit? See, that's the missing link. Is that we don't involve the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is Jesus. The Holy Spirit is God. It is God's Spirit. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you here. God's will for every believer is to give praise continually under every circumstances. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. We are to give praise under every circumstances that you come under. Whatever you face in life, you are to give praise. The children of Israel were faced with the enemy. They gave, God said, send the praisers. They praised God. You know what praise does? Praise is this. Praise gets you off of the situation and focuses or refocuses us to look at the one who is the deliverer. See, praise also does this. It's an operation of our faith. Faith. You know what? I don't feel free. I feel bogged down. I feel all this negativity. I got all kinds of emotions. I feel depressed. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to praise God. There's an operation of faith. Our faith pulls whatever heaven has for us. And that's freedom. Whatever you need. God is that for us. If you lack, you know what God does when we lack? He starts meddling with our tithes and offerings. Are you a giver? He asks us, are you a giver? It'll come to your mind. God will quicken you. Are you a giver? Are you give consistently? Are you a faithful giver? Because the reason why is because God does not go against his word. 
He doesn't go against his word. God's not going to go. It's like we don't pray prayers like bless those that give and bless those that don't give. That doesn't, that, that's not scriptural. Bless those that give. Yes, that's scriptural. Bless those that don't give. That's not scriptural. See, because there's no operation of faith. And when there's no operation of faith, it, it displeases God. It's impossible to please God without faith. Because faith releases God to come to our need. He supplies all of our needs according to his riches and glory. Amen. But he only does it for those that are walking in faith. We walk if, if you can't walk in faith, then begin to praise God. It'll kick in faith. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So what does it say? In everything, give thanks. In every, say everything. Everything. Okay, everything. Everything that you come in contact with in your life. Whatever you're going through in your life. Everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Turn over to Hebrews 13, 15. I'm throwing these scriptures at you. By him, let us continue continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name the sacrifice of praise the reason why it's a sacrifice it is a sacrifice when you feel when you do not feel like praising God there are people that probably should have been here today that didn't feel like coming to church today they had whatever excuse that there was but it's, it's because they don't want to sacrifice they don't want to make a sacrifice. Why is it that when we are hit with a major cat catastrophic event in our country, all of a sudden people start thinking about God. They start coming to church for a short time. Uh, why, why is it? See, they made, a, they made a way. See, we will always make a way. Always make a way. To, even when there's no way, you'll make a way. You'll make a way. See, this is what the scripture tells us, that we are to offer up the sacrifice of praise. I don't feel like praising. I don't feel like going to church. I don't feel like doing this. I don't feel like reading the word of God. I don't feel like praying. It's not about our feelings. God does not consult our feelings. A feelings is not an excuse. Our feelings will make all kinds of excuses. No, the reason why I couldn't make it is because of, because because of, because of. No, no. All excuses don't amount to nothing if we're not obedient before God. It does not. We need to be obedient. Obedience will bring us to maturity, to grow up. Because we need the church in America really, really, really. Say really. Really. <laughs> And really and really and really needs to, is really immature today. It is, doesn't have the maturity level that the third world countries, Christians, have. You know what? They are totally sold out. You saw the film that went way back that I showed you on YouTube. The underground church. The underground church does not mean they're going underground, literally. It just means that it's, not, it's illegal to hold an assembly where there's Christians. It's illegal. But they risk it. What are they doing? Sacrifice. They're sacrificing. We got it too easy. People pick and choose. Oh, the pastor's too hard. I've had it done with me. Uh, I, I'm not going to be. There's people that don't come here because I'm too conf confrontational with truth. You know, it's amazing. You would think that Jesus, he had multitudes that were following him. And then he turns around and he says, unless you pick up your cross and follow me, you can't be my disciples. You talk about somebody that was real straight out. You would think that, oh no, I got all this mega people coming in. You know, I, I better give them what they want to hear. But see, what happens is that a lot of pastors, and I'm afraid of this, a lot of pastors today that are giving people what they want to hear. And they're not producing Christians that are diehards. I think in the, in the, in the service, the Marines, 
they, what is that? What's the model there? They choose. What do they have there? They choose a few. A few. A few. A proud and a few. They don't choose them all. The, the, what, what, is it, what is it? You know, because there's a certain standard. Out of 57 guys that stood on footprints with me, Out of 57, only seven went through. Seven went through. What does that say about you? <laughs> Gonna fight. You know, and, and but it's true. But yet we come to, and, and then you know what they do? They'll tell you in no certain terms. You know, you belong. You belong to me. You're mine now. You do as I say. And I'm not, I'm not going to ask permission. I'm not going to have a vote. Okay? This, this, is not, this is not democratic. You already know that democratic is not God. Even though we have a democratic state. It's, it was supposed to be for the people, you know, by the people, for the people. You know, government is not for the people the way it looks. In case you haven't noticed, that's the way it is today now. It's not for the people, it's for the government. I heard this. I heard there's a whole lot of underground stuff going on, like a city underground. And it's all set up for those that are leaders only. What happens to the American people when there's a fallout? They're not for the people. All this stuff is being done all behind the scenes. And, and, and we're just looking at watching and thinking that things are always going to go all the time the way it is today. We better get in there as Christians. Because this kingdom, they're trying to hold on to this kingdom the best way they possibly can. You see, but you know what? It's, it's a shaky kingdom. We need to get a hold of the God's kingdom. But see, it, it needs to be a whole bunch of diehards. You need, you need to be. You need to turn into special forces. Praise the Lord. I mean, the uh, uh, Bible says, and uh, uh, Paul wrote to Timothy, and, and he says, he says, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Endure hardness. Endure means this: you're going to have op opposition. But through the endurance, when you endure, it molds your character. When the first time you start to endure, until the last time at, at, on the other side, you end up being somebody you never thought possible you could be. And that's what God wants to do. That's why he says, take up your cross. And then when you start moaning and complaining, he says, hey, remind you, take up your cross. Because what's moaning and complaining is your flesh. See, in the, in, in, the, in, in the armed forces, they're not going to look at your, uh, your, your, your body and say, oh, oh you, you're not feeling too good. Okay, you can sleep in. You know, they're not going to look at that. Get up. Because your body's not in charge. But that, and what are we, what, what's the difference? Now we come to God, what do we do? Those have been, do we get soft? All of a sudden we got soft. We're, we're not supposed to be soft. We're supposed to be endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And then he goes and tells Timothy, he goes, nobody entangles himself with the affairs of this life. Another, another translation says, with a civilian life. You don't get yourself caught up with civilian life. Remember where you came from. Remember where you belong. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You can enjoy the things of life that God has blessed us with upon planet earth, but don't get so tangled up in it that the cares of life weighs you down. Amen. And when it weighs you down like that, it softens your spirit. And God wants, God, we got the greater one living inside of us, but he cannot reveal his greatness when through a soft vessel. Praise the Lord. I know for a fact, when you get, I get entangled with the things of life, and you start thinking about this of life, this and that, this and that, this and this and this and that, you lose focus of your spirit. And then you become weak. So then when you start facing opposition, your weakness comes up to the surface. 
And, and, and what happens is that we start crying and then we start complaining and we start losing sight of what Jesus did. We lose sight of the cross. What we need to do is that we need to bring ourselves to the cross. When we complain, bring ourselves to the cross. Look at the one, the treasure that was released to us, the gift that was released to us so we don't have to be in bondage. So it doesn't matter what, what you're going through I'm going to continually praise God. I'm going to continually just worship Him. I'm just going to thank God for all that He's done in my life. And then if you need to go and you forget, then you need to look at the Scripture and see what He's done. Amen. There was a curse in my family line. And so what the Bible says, that Jesus became a curse for me, so I don't have to repeat my family line curses. Oh, my, my family line, they had this illness and that illness, so evidently we're going to experience the same illnesses too. No, no, where's, where's the curse stop? The curse stops when we begin to praise and worship and have a thankful heart to receive that Jesus became a curse. Now, I don't have to walk out that curse anymore. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to show you. Now, you already know what God wants from us. And I'm going to continue in it, but I'm going to show you something. There is something that stands in the way of our lives that we often overlook and we forget what we have within our hearts. God is not looking at what we can do. He's looking at the condition of a heart that needs to change. Amen? Amen? God is seeking those that will worship Him out of a pure heart. Not a perfect, pure. He's talking about the heart. A pure heart. We are responsible for our flesh. God is responsible to change our heart. As our heart is changed, so is our flesh. So what's in our heart affects our flesh. What is in our heart comes out of our mouth. What is in our heart creates a behavior. So how we behave is based upon what's in our heart. We live out what is in our heart. So if we're living out something that doesn't line up with the Word, then we need to check our heart. And there's something that's in our heart that is stopping us to truly worship out of a pure heart. Look at Hebrews chapter 12. Verse 14. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Says this. Pursue peace with all people and holiness. Say peace and holiness. Peace and holiness. Okay, this is what he tells us to pursue. Without which no one will see the Lord. I think I pay attention to this. No one will see the Lord. Verse 15. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God. Not only looking at other, others, but also looking at yourself. Lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble, and by this many become defiled. What blocks our gratitude, having a thankful heart, is a root of bitterness. What forms the root of bitterness? It could be, it's a, there's a number, number of things. But one of the things that really stands out a lot is to deal with relationship. We have 
a lot of personalities within a church. Personalities. But we're not supposed to measure people by their personalities because a personality is a mask. It's not the real person. The real person is the heart. Now, if the heart is carrying on a root of bitterness, it will actually change your personality. It will change how you are. Now, so in order to change how I am, let's say for instance, let's look at this, this is a pretty common thing that happens to a lot of, a lot, it's a lot of, it's a big problem in our society. In fact, what do you think it is? A big problem, starts with the A, a big problem in our society. It is an attitude, but... Anger. Huh? Anger. Anger. What? <laughs> Alcohol. Alcohol, yeah. <laughs> you want to settle it down, but yeah, it's not going to work. But. Anger. Anger. Now, I'm, gonna have, I'm not going to have a show of hands. You just put it in your own. I don't want to know. <laughs> How many here have anger issues? Just do that. No. <laughs> okay. Anger is not a problem because anger is is actually a normal human behavior. Okay. But it is something that has been blocked and is something based upon perception perceive how things should be. Anger is a way, because if it's not according to my perception, then you get angry. The anger is to, is to get others around you to see it the way you see it. And you see it no other way, and the only reason why is because it's gone through your head over and over and over. And if you're a thinker, you've created a mindset, a belief, based upon your own perception of your experiences. And if you didn't have very good experiences or negative experiences, then you carry that over through your life and now you look at everything else in the perception of a bad experience. And now you look at things that are not lining up according to your perception, which you don't understand this, but it's distorted. Okay, so now, you look at through your perception, and then you go off because it doesn't line up. And all you show all your emotions, and then you, you start destroying everybody else around you. And what that, what that is saying is this. You do not have an option. You do not have a right of opinion. You don't even have a, you don't have a right to breathe unless I ask, tell you to breathe. That's an angry person. I'm, I'm going over, okay? In other words, an angry person doesn't give the person any rights whatsoever. You know what? Is that the Spirit of God? You stand back. Then why is it that after we go through that, we feel guilty? And then when we go through that, we feel guilty. We go and we try to soften it up and just act like nothing ever happened. No, no, no. Something happened. Something happened and it needs to be addressed. What needs to happen? Repentance. Repentance is, I acknowledge, that was wrong of me. You have a right of your opinion. If it don't match with mine, it's okay. It's all right. But let's, let's find a solution. Let's find an agreement that we can agree with. We may not totally agree, but let's make it work. Anger person doesn't go for that. And then when you stay, and you see, now watch what anger does. It starts forming a root of bitterness 
and it changes everything about you. I've talked to those that have anger issues. I do anger management. I'm certified in it. And, I, and, I, and, and they are calm people. Many of them are calm people. Their temperament is calm. And they're nice. That's the way I was. You know, I'm a nice guy, man. I'm a nice guy. You back me in the corner. But see, that... Is a cover-up. I've had them in the past when I've done counseling. It says, "Man, you just—they seem your your spouse, whichever one, seems seems so nice. You don't know what I see." <laughs> and, I, and I say, "I know, but they seem so nice. I know, but let me tell you, their niceness is who they are." That's who they really are. But other, that other stuff gets in the way because of the root of bitterness that needs to be uprooted. Because it'll keep on producing and producing the fruit of anger over and over and over. Anger management, you cannot manage the flesh yourself. You cannot. You need somebody bigger than you, and that's God. Amen. Anger man management in our society, what that does, all it does is stroke the flesh. That's all it does. I know you can do better. Yeah, you're getting better. Just follow this. Here, here, here follow this principle and that principle and this and this and that. You can have people go through anger management. They go through domestic violence classes. And then what happens? They got to do them again. How many? Who did that four times? Oh, no names? <laughs> you did it four times? My God, how stubborn you are. <laughs> yeah, there's a man that admits it. Hasn't had any problems, right? That was the old man. You can't, you can't kill the old man by yourself. Amen. You really can't. Until I let God come in and do and say, I can't do this anymore. I, I can't. I mean, I'm ugly. I, I think I said this once before. When I hit a, a, an anger part of me, this was years ago, where I just like, oh man, I was just totally beside myself. I happened to look in the mirror and I saw my face. It was dark. My face was dark. No, I mean, I'm colored, you know, brown and stuff, but I mean, I'm, talk, I'm talking about dark. And the eyes, it didn't look good. And that's what she saw. That's what she would see. And I said, I don't like this because this is not what I want to be. But when I reached out for God and I said, God, take it. But he did help me. But see, there were some roots in there. There were some roots. I had a spirit of intimidation. I had a spirit of low self-esteem that was produced when I was a kid growing up. I had a spirit of rejection as a person. I felt like a person of unimportance. And when somebody shut me off, I get angry. And so when you get when you get angry too, is your spouse. When she would shut me off, basically, basically shut me off because I didn't make sense. Then I get angry. She's disrespecting me. And I would throw all, all that out there. And really, in order to get rid of all the roots of bitterness, it, what has to happen is that you have to identify them. If you have to identify them one by one by one, God will help you pluck it right out. Amen. As long as you identify them. The message that John the Baptist said, repent. And he baptized in water. The message that Jesus, Jesus had was the same message. Repent. Except now he baptized you in the Holy Spirit. Where you get born again. 
Praise the Lord. Now, he knew that we couldn't get rid of all the stuff that happened in our lives, negative stuff. That's the reason why he gave us the Holy Spirit. So why, how come we don't use the Holy Spirit? I look at television and I see some of the programs that are out there and the commercials they put out. They got this program and that program. Oh, a new program came up and got this program and that program. We got so many programs out there. It's just amazing. All it is, is man trying to do and trying to live life without God. That's all it is. You can go down, down on the internet and find any problem that you got. Hey, you got a, you, you got a program for it. It's like, <laughs> wow. But there are cases of total, total, total recovery of these issues is not high at all. It's very, very low. All because we turn our backs on God. God is the missing link. God created us. Man is trying to create programs thinking that we're the ones that we created. We, we all know one another. No, 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 you don't. You don't. God's the one that knows us. He's the creator. We need to go back to the creator to get it all fixed up in our lives. But I'll tell you, I don't have anger issues anymore. Now, do I get angry? Sure. I'll have some frustrations. Boom. Let it there. But you know what? I'm not going to lose it. I'm not going to give my power over to the circumstances. Because a person that loses their anger is a, is a person who is weak emotionally. Why? Because they hand over their, what's going on in, around them, situation that rises up, they hand their power over to them. Somebody's over there. I, I was watching something on, on, it was something I taped, but it was a tape from years back. It was, in the, it was created in the 70s. Have you ever seen, um, anybody here seen the program uh, Billy Jack? That's an, old one. That's an old one, isn't it? Uh, he, he was a native, he presented, as a, he presented himself as a Native American. He's not, but he, he, all the culture of the Native Americans and what they believe. And then I went and I saw another one, too, that had taped. It was back-to-back. -back. It was from uh, uh, Turner Classics. And I went to go see it after I had taped it. And it was uh, The Trial of Billy Jack. Okay. This guy knows martial arts. He was supposed to. He, in actuality, he did know, know martial arts. He wanted to do almost all of his stunts and, and all. So, but the things that they do with the Native Americans, uh, it was going through it. I'm serious, man. And my wife even said, whoa, the things that they were saying when he would go out there, he goes to the sweat uh, tent and then he'd go out to the high Arizona mountain uh, uh, rocks and stuff and be out there by himself and he'd hear different things. And of course, that, that's not, you know, it's, there's some demonic in there because you leave yourself open to spirits because Native Americans would say spirits, S. That's dangerous. There's only one spirit according to Jesus. Holy Spirit. Then Holy Spirits. Holy Spirit. But, the thing I want to get your attention is this. That they would say things that were profound. Teachings that were profound. It's all in Scripture. They would just give the credit to the spirits. But you know what? I look at that, and it's only because the church has not presented the principles as not only logos, but rhema, living. Watching people, watching Christians live out, live out this Bible right here. As the Bible says, we're living epistles known and read by all men. They, are, they need to read us. If they don't pick up the Bible, they, they see you walking out the Bible. And so they, they see these principles, and one of the things that was teaching Billy Jack was, was anger. You know, he had anger. And, and all he says, what, and, he, and he said this, he says, he says, well, what do I do if I go and hit them, or they hit me and stuff like that? It's, it's that if you go and respond to it, then what happens is that you've entered into their issues. 
whoa, I teach that myself, anger management. You know, you, you, you made a year old now. Oh, they got me upset. I, I, I'm, I'm through with you. I, I don't even want to see your face. You know, you're just acting up. I, I don't want, get away from me. You know, and you're, you're flipping out. You just gave them your power. And God has empowered us with the Holy Spirit to have control. And that's this. We control by the Spirit, and this is how it's done, our obedience to truth. If we walk in obedience to truth, all this other stuff that we're stuck with, that not stuck with, but that we've been raised in, and all the issues that we've had in our life, starts falling away from us. So if you have any anger issues and you respond in, the, in, a, in a manner, I ain't touching that. That's theirs. That's their problem. No, and then they try to get it on. They try to edge you on. Edge you on. Have you had people edge you on? Anybody? You know, they edge you on. They edge you on. They try to bring you in with their words and all. What they talk, what they say today in this generation, and they punk you, you know. <laughs> We, we didn't t say that in our generation, but, you know, if you're a punk, you're just a punk, you know. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, but what it is is that, is that they're, they're doing that. They're doing that over and over again. And, and you know what? What you need to do is, I can give them my power. I know where you're going with this. I know what you're trying to do with this. And it says, no, I'm, I'm not going to do that. Until you calm down, we'll talk about it. Don't ever talk about issues when you are hot. Because you know what? Let's say spouse. If you say things when you're hot, you're going to say things you don't mean. But what happens, the spouse will turn that around and say, no, that's really what you mean. Now the true self comes out. No, your mind went into autopilot. You are no longer in control. What is in control? Flesh. Flesh is in control. Okay. Your emotions are in control. Your emotions will not allow you to reason, to think. And the Bible says that we are to renew our minds with truth. So if you got truth in there, then you'll act in truth. Amen. And you'll know that, you know what, this person over here is trying to, I mean, it could be your loved one. This person over here is trying to take that truth from me, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate truth. I'm going to love them, I'm going to pray for them, and I'm going to forgive them. And you know what I'm going to do? And I'm going to forgive them bef before they ask for forgiveness. Don't hold them to it. Because if you hold them to it, roots of bitterness starts coming in. Animosity starts coming in. Amen. So now, is it going to be hard to praise God? Is it going to be hard to worship God? Is it going to be hard to be thankful? No, people will actually stay home because they got, a, they got in a fight. They'll do that. Well, you, you want to see, you know, we, how are you going to settle it now? My wife and I have come, this is years when we were young in, in our married life, we, 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 we fight before church. She'd always like to be right on time. In fact, she's not right on time. She wanted to be ahead. And I, I admit it, I'd be slow. Oh, that would irritate her. Same fight over and over and over again. But it comes from my family line. My mom wasn't that way. My dad was. You know, you just, whatever. My mom would always try to urge him, urge him. But a lot of that stuff that my dad had of being slower, you know, get, not get there in time, it, it was, it, it, a, lot of, a lot of the siblings got it. And now we have to fight with it. We have to fight with it. You know, and the only way you can fight with it and win is allowing the Holy Spirit, but also doing this, admitting that you are late admitting it and quit bringing excuses because excuses means that I can continue to act the way I act I don't have to change you just have to put up with me that's wrong right that's wrong you can't no no I don't have to put up with you I guess what, what I'll do is this when you tell me you're going to do something I, I, you know what 
I just know that you're going to lie to me. You're lying to me right now. And they go, oh, I'm not lying to you. You just smile at them. Love them and smile at them and pray for them. Yeah. Until they begin to see. And if everybody will do that so you don't enable them. Everybody will do that. Then, they have, then they're forced to see themselves. Yeah. Then they're going to look and say, you know, I did. You know, because some, some people would just get so irritated with. Uh, I know some people used to get irritated with me. Oh, especially my wife. I'm, do, I'm done better, right? Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And I know that because I know that what I used to do before is wrong. But you can't change something if you think, it's, if you think you're all right and you come up with excuses. You can't change it then. You need to change. We all need to change. Now, you don't look at me and say, okay, well, you're late like that. No. Well, I can find some things on you too. <laughs> I'll talk to your spouse. <laughs> Now, these, and I, I hit on this a little, a little bit more, only because we need to break out of this so we can come into this here, as John chapter 4, verse 23 says, Jesus said this. He goes, so if you're having a hard time, then you need to get those roots out, those bitter roots out of there. Animosity, get it out, so you can have a heart of thanksgiving. And it will actually, the nice person that you are, you'll remain that way. 24-7. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Ain't that right, Sonia? You're going to be nice all the time, right? That's right. Praise the Lord. Glory. <laughs> yes. All right. Ain't that right, Pablo? Yes. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> <laughs> You're not moved by what you see, right, Pablo? You're not moved by what you see. You're not moved by what you hear. You're not moved what you, by what you feel. You're moved by what God says. Got victory. Yes. Praise the Lord. That's truth. When you renew your mind, that you activate truth, this other will leave. Jesus said, but the hour is coming, and now is. Say now is. Now is. So now means now. When the true worshipers, true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. God is, a, God is spirit. And those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. I don't know my Bible, but you notice. God is a spirit. Spirit. God's spirit. It's capital L, L. I mean capital S. If you look at it, it says he's looking for those that will worship in spirit. Little s. Spirit. You see that? There's a show there. Yeah. Right. Good. Okay. God is a spirit. Okay, now. God is a spirit. Guess what? God is the Holy Spirit. Yes. God is the Holy Spirit. All right? So now, in order to worship, he's looking for true worshipers. That's dealing with the condition of our heart. Our heart's got to be pure. True worshipers. A heart of worship. It's hard. I allowed you to worship God this morning a little bit. Just go ahead and do it and do it. If you broke out and just started worshiping, you start, different ones started crying and started shaking under the power of God, I probably wouldn't have a message. I probably go sit on these chairs and let you go and just continue to worship God and see what the Spirit of God does. I've not done it in this church. I've done it in other churches that I pastored. That it, sometimes it would just take off. And I'd just sit there and I'd just watch the Spirit of God move. People breaking, people under the power of God, the Spirit of God, the love of God, having an encounter with the Spirit of God. You know, but it all came through worship. Amen. What, why, why is, when does that happen? It's when our heart, our spirit, makes connection to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Which causes the flesh to just break. It gets rid of all the pride, the pride shell that's on us, gets rid of it. Praise the Lord. Amen. Do you recall a year, two years, I can't remember, that I started crying? 
I'm I just crying. There was a connection that took place at that moment. I think I was praying for somebody. And then all of a sudden, it was like, it was my, my spirit just touched the Holy Spirit. It, it, I mean, all it needs is just a touch because you can't get the full of it. It'll, it'll kill you. It'll wipe you out. I just had that touch and it just broke me and just broke me and just broke me and just broke me. But see, now my flesh, any, any pride of my flesh, it was out the window. It was gone. I was crying. I was, you know, being a mocoso and all this, you know. And, <laughs> all, you know, it, it's just all over. And then I would look at different ones and it'd start all over again. I would, it, it's because it, it's the Spirit of God. I was getting the heart of God and I cry out for God's heart all the time. And I was getting the heart of God and I was looking at different ones in the church. And I start crying because I saw, I know some of their lives of where they came from. And to know that God transformed them, it just broke me. But that's because God wanted me to feel His love that He had for those people. For people. You know? And it's almost like I wanted to say, okay, God, let up. Let up. You know? That's enough. It happened to me one time uh, over in Mariposa when I was pastoring there. And, and the Bible study night. It was just a Bible study night. And I get ready to minister the Bible. Was, I guess we had singing worship. And I was worshiping. And all of a sudden, it hit me. But th this time, it hit me for three hours. I think it was three hours or two hours, something like that. And it was at nighttime. My wife doesn't drive at night. She had to drive that night. I was in, under the, the, the encounter with the Holy Spirit. I could not drive. I could not drive. God was doing things and depositing things on the inside of me. It was different than it was when I was here. It was different. There was things that were just being deposited inside of me. It was just breaking me and breaking me and breaking me. That's what I'm talking about. When the, our spirit touches the Holy Spirit, forget, forget the flesh. Forget the flesh. Don't worry about the flesh. It's going for the ride. It's going for the ride. But God is doing something supernatural. I've had other encounters. It doesn't happen every time I pray, no. But I've had other encounters. It tells me so much of God's love. All I feel in a lot of those encounters is God's love. Okay, that's not the devil. It's God's love. So what comes out of my mouth is truth, and I get straight. And some people get upset when I get real straight and with the truth. But it's good love, because love is straight. Amen. Yes. Love is straight. Love will tell the truth. Are you going to lie to your children if you know they're, they're going to get hurt and they, and they should not be with these friends and stuff, and you want to pull them away and all? And... and, and they don't understand it. They don't see it. But you know what? It's for your own good. I'm pulling you away from them. Amen. You don't need to be with them. What, what is that? They may not like you at that time. They're going to moan and groan and get and get upset. I don't like you. Have you ever, when you were kids, when the kids were little, and, and you go, you know, give them a little whipping or something, and then they go, I don't like you. Or you tell them to go to the room and says, I don't like you. You're a bad daddy. You're a bad mother. You know, you're, you're just bad. There's a lot of adults who do that with God. Why would you allow this, God? What do you have this preacher telling? Man, I need to get a preacher that's going to make me feel good. You know? Have you had those little kids say, I want another daddy. I want another mother. Mommy. Wow, really? Adults, a lot of, I see today a lot of adults act in the same way. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13, put away childish things. But yet I see a lot of children in, in, our, in our generation. They haven't grown up. So where is God looking? God is saying, I'm looking for those that will worship me. Not just with their bodies, but with their spirit. And when you worship with your spirit, you lose sight of time. Totally lose sight. You don't think about your stomach. You don't think about what you're going to eat. You just lose sight. Totally. That's it. That's where God wants the church today. Again, the other countries, many of them, they're having revivals. 
All right? They lost sight. Brazil, there's a church there. It's a big church, but the Holy Ghost church that they actually have to sound a bell to stop the people from worshiping after two or three hours later. And we worship for about 15 minutes and it's time to, okay, that's enough. Something's wrong with us. The church in America is sick. That's the reason why we go to other programs. Because we're not tapping into the full source of who God is. God is able to do anything that we believe. But because we don't believe, we believe in the programs instead, then God is limited. Then we only bring God whenever we, wherever we believe. And that's where He will meet us and that, in, in that place. And that's it. Okay, I'm going to end. Tell your flesh I'm going to end. <laughs> you tell your flesh what you want it to do. <laughs> Proverbs 4.23 says this. This is what we need to do. We need to guard our hearts above all else, for it determines the course of your life. We must operate with the fruit of peace. Remember where I just read that scripture on the other one where, where it says um, in Hebrews, where it says, pursue peace and holiness. Pursue peace and holiness. What does pursue mean? Chase. Go after it. Go after it. With all men. With all people. Okay. I am going to be quick to forgive people. People that offend me, people that hurt me, people that disappointed me, I'm going to forgive them. You know why? Because I want all the doors closed in my life. I want everything closed. I think it will be a good practice for you to do the same thing. That closes the doors for any kind of bitterness that will try to get in. Any resentment that will try to come in there. You need to close all the doors. You know what? I'm going to forgive them right away. I'm going to forgive them of what, what, whatever they've done. You know why? I'm guarding my heart. Because I need peace. I need peace in my life. Is it because you're acting ugly? I, don't, I need my peace. I need my peace. So I'm just going to forgive you. So for, for, uh, Philippians 4, 6 says this. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And then the God of, the God of all peace. The God of peace. Is it? The God of peace will... So that surpasses understanding. We'll guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So what's the guard? Huh? Peace. Peace is our peace is our guard. It guards us. So when we have peace and we and we're walking in the holiness of God, guess what we can do easily now? We can worship God. We can have a heart of thanksgiving every single day. That is a heart. That is a pure heart. A pure heart. So what did you learn today? Be thankful. Be free from anger. Oh, and anger is because of the roots of bitterness that's inside. Okay. To, to who do we do with the bit, with the roots? You uproot it. What is? How do you uproot it? You uproot it by. Okay. You, you uproot it by acknowledging it, acknowledging it, and bringing truth in there and acting out in truth in faith. You pull that out. Okay, so you, as you pull that out, and then what you got to continue to do is guard your heart so you can have a pure heart. And when you have a pure heart, here's what it does. Here, I rest it with this. Literally sets you up when you have a pure heart. It sets you up that when you begin to worship and praise God, your spirit connects to the Holy Spirit. Amen. And that's what creates breakthrough. That's when you have breakthrough. Right there. 
You didn't get that. You have a pure heart. You guarded your heart. You have a pure heart. The Holy Spirit is there. Now you connect to Him. But when you connect to the Holy Spirit, you connect to the heart of God. Now you're operating with God's heart. Now, now, get mad. You can't. You can't. You can't even stay mad. You can't. Because the connection of your spirit to the Holy Spirit. You got God's heart. Now the only time, the times that God would get angry, He, he would get angry, it's called holy anger. And don't go and act out in flesh and say that's holy anger. <laughs> See, Jesus has had holy anger with this. Because you're making my father's house a house of merchandise. It should be a house of prayer. And he straightened that out. So what you need to do is get angry at yourself to straighten yourself out. Not straighten people out. I am not my wife's teacher. She's not my teacher. We would like to teach each other. Here, I got a teaching moment for you. You need to, you need to tighten up the stuff instead of not, and having them loose. No, 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 no. That's what she's done. It. She's always done it that way. It's okay. It's all right. You know, it's no big deal. Huh? <laughs> Stand to your feet before I start preaching again.